You know how Pokemon go through this kind of thing where they start out cute and cuddly and you can kind of see the destructive potential that they could grow into and then they evolve and they suddenly have grown far past that destructive potential into something that could potentially destroy the entire world. That's kind of what we're doing today with this build. My name is Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman, and welcome back to the channel. Unicorn Overlord. Hello everyone. If you enjoy what I do, my coverage of Unicorn Overlord, my guides, my news videos, my Let's Plays commentary, etc., and you would like to support the channel, a like on this video and a subscription to the channel would be very much appreciated. Thank you so much. So what is the topic of the day today? The topic is Bruno's Bombardiers, one of my absolute favorite units in my first run here of Unicorn Overlord, and the natural evolution of the Firebug Squad that I highlighted in my first build video that used to be helmed by Aush the Wizard. Well, let me tell you, a lot of things have changed since that era, and uh, they're all the more powerful for it. So we're gonna talk about exactly what makes this build tick, why it works the way that it does, and then we'll show off the specifics of each character in the build and how they contribute to the overall functioning of the unit. If you've seen my streams, you've probably seen Bruno at work. And by Bruno, I mean the squad as well, but Bruno is the frontliner and I mean, he's wider than all three of the girls in the back line. So like, <laughs> he's kind of the front man on the show. Uh, and you might be forgiven at first for looking at this and not expecting it to be a flame burst comp, a burn comp, but that is in fact exactly what it is. You see, as we've progressed through Unicorn Overlord, I've realized there is so much potential for build crafting here due to all of the different types of items and their subset effects that they have. Like when we first got our hands on the demo, we found the Chlorotic Wand that gives the Fire Burst ability and the Fire Bow, and we're like, oh wow, this is insane synergy. I can light a second guy on fire. I can put the burn status effect on him with the bow and then have twice the potential targets to detonate with Flame Burst to deal damage to the entire enemy squad. That's crazy. That's so strong. Uh, then I found a staff that allows you to inflict burn on an entire enemy row. And then I found a tome that allows you to put flame conferral on an ally's melee attack, like the ice conferral tome, except now it causes burn. And then I found a sword that can inflict burn, and then, and then, and then, <laughs> and it just keeps going. That's when I realized that we had something very special on our hands here. With this setup, where I have four different characters, all of whom are able to inflict burn and also just deal massive damage on their own and also tank a massive amount of damage, we have a frontline capable army that is able to just tank hit after hit, clear tons of enemy squads and often in one round and rarely take any serious damage or at least any damage that they can't heal off of. By having the Bruno the Gladiator in front, of course, you could use a generic Gladiator as well if you would like, you have an incredibly versatile HP tank. You don't have to worry about taking bonus damage from being an armored unit and getting hit by a crushing attack or something like that. You don't have to worry about something getting a true strike attack on your dodge tank. Bruno is just a wall of meat and everything deals pretty equal damage to him because of his poor defenses in general. Cavalry a little bit more since he's an infantry unit, but even so, not anything too terrible. And because of the gladiator's bulk up that allows him to just naturally heal when they get hit, he's able to heal off most of this damage. This is in thanks part to the fact that we have a shaman or now a druid in our party who is able to just absolutely destroy the attack and magic attack stats of anything that tries to actually take a swing at Bruno. And even when they deal, still deal some good damage to him, he can just heal it off, especially if he crits, which he's more likely to do than you would think. Then of course our Druid is able to use the Flame Hex Staff to burn more targets, a whole row of targets, causing them to take even more damage over time and be potential targets for Flame Burst. We have, because it just synergizes so damn well, kind of like if he was a Legionnaire, but you know, a wall of meat instead of a wall of metal. We have a Cell Sword, or now a Lance Connect, who is going to be able to follow up attack anything that hits Bruno for even more damage. And then if I want her to, also be able to fire slash something to make it burn. And then of course, finally, our Witch. You would think, wow, witches don't use fire, they use ice, that's kind of their thing. Not in this case. Valerie, the witch, now sorceress, has the flame conferral tome, meaning that she can literally light Bruno's axe on fire for him, allowing him to burn, again, a whole row of enemies. If things work out the way that I want them to here, by the first round of combat being complete, 
the entire enemy party will be on fire. And some of them may have more than one stack of burn on them. It's not uncommon for me to not even get to the flame burst effect because everything either dies to Bruno's massive swinging hammer or the burn effects or follow up attacks from the Lance Connect. And then if there is anything left alive, flame burst will typically finish them off. It's like kind of a devastatingly powerful combination. And nine times out of 10, if there's something that I'm having trouble trying to figure out how to approach, I can just throw Bruno's squad at it. And even if they take some hits in the process, they will clear it for me. They will be the bomb that clears the road. It's hysterically awesome. And because he's the frontliner, Bruno has kind of taken on a legendary reputation amongst my community and people in my streams because like, as he says, not even worried. He just takes the hits and he keeps on rolling and then he dishes out massive damage in the process. Uh, this is an all out attack unit. They're not here to try and stall. They're not here to try and defend, even though they are kind of difficult to bring down. And they have their weaknesses, of course. There's really no squad in Unicorn Overlord that is going to be without weaknesses unless there's some truly end game BS nonsense. But again, most of the situations that this team has been thrown at, they can handle. And with surprising aplomb. Uh, so with a, a quick overview of what they do and how they do it, as well as some footage to show them off, let's switch over to the actual build here, and I can show you what each character has going for them that makes them tick. So here in slot number one, we have Bruno the Berserker. You can see his stat set here, also his customized color scheme if you hadn't seen it before. Does not quite work as well as uh, some of my other uniques who I've customized the channel colors, but still, it's not bad. It's not bad. I have him on Offensive Precise, seeing as how he typically has more than enough HP anyway, and giving him some more defensive stats really won't help, seeing as how Berserkers don't really have defensive stats to begin with. We can compensate for that with gear and the setup of his team and all that type of good stuff. Uh, but he has good damage, he's got good HP, he's even got pretty good accuracy with Precise, which is nice. As far as his skills are concerned, we're looking at this following loadout along with his items. He's running a simple wide smash and bulk up. That is honestly all I want him to be doing here. I do have other Berserker skills unlocked, such as Mounting Charge and Wide Counter, both of which are good abilities, but not for the role that I want Bruno to be fulfilling here. He's very simple. I want him to deal big damage to a row of enemies, and I want him to heal when he gets hit. I don't want him to be spending time buffing his own attack and HP. I don't want him to be counterattacking if he takes a hit. I want him to bulk up. If he's swinging, I want it to be wide smash so he can get the flame conferral from our witch. Very simple, very effective. As far as his actual items are concerned, I am currently rocking the King's Axe Draconash on him, which is such an awesome name, by the way. This is the King's Weapon that comes from the statue quest in Drakenhold, similar to the King's Blade Cornix that you can get in Cornea. This is a very nice weapon. It gives a very respectable 20 physical attack and plus 5 to all stats, which is, of course, helping our HP, our accuracy, our physical attack, etc. I was using the Rose Knight's Axe prior to this. Less damage, but it gives initiative and accuracy, which are both very nice for this build. But given what it is that Bruno's doing and the fact that he wants to be able to tank as well as deal damage, the King's Axe Draconash helps with that significantly. This is an excellent item and it is an excellent weapon for Bruno. Especially seeing how it doesn't give him any different effects that are otherwise wasted on him, like new attacks and things like that. Since again, don't want to be using those on him. Then we have the Leaf Brooch for some extra healing. It's only 10% of HP when using an active skill, plus one physical defense, plus one magical defense. But when you've got a sort of just HP wall physical regen tank, you want every little advantage that you can get because it does work really well. But if you suddenly take a bigger hit than you were expecting for, you need to be able to kind of bounce back from that without too much effort. And the Leaf Brooch helps with that. Just getting an extra 10 HP when we go to take a swing on top of the already meaty heals that we get off of bulk up is really nice. Then to round things out, we have a Carnelian Pendant and a Lapis Pendant because again, we're simple business here. We don't need anything particularly fancy. More attacks, more wide smash, more damage, more burn, excellent. And then more opportunities to bulk up, excellent. Honestly, if Bruno can survive the first round of combat against his enemies, then you can pretty much clear the squad once that happens. And even if he doesn't survive, typically the rest of the members of the squad can clean up, but having the ability to bulk up three times in a row gives him a lot of HP to work with. It's really, really nice. Then finally, I do have bulk up set to own HP is less than 75%. That way, if Bruno does get grazed by something that's just relatively minor damage, he won't burn one of his three bulk ups on that. He'll have to take a bit bigger of a hit. Because again, like 40% HP is really good. You're looking at 40, 
43, 45 HP off of that. And then if he crits as well, like you could heal off most hits with this. Moving on to Renee, our sorceress. She's rocking the Chlorotic Wand, which is of course very integral to this build. You can see her stats and her color scheme here. Uh, all around her offensive, pretty standard setup for a witch. You want damage, you want initiative, you want all that good stuff. And she's got it all in spades and she looks good doing it. For the loadout, again, we have that Chlorotic Wand. We have the Sorcerer's Medallion, giving her extra magic attack, extra magic attack percentage, and extra critical rate percentage. Very nice, good all-around stuff. Very nice for when she fire bursts, as well as if she winds up throwing out ice bolts or magic missiles. Then we have the Lapis Pendant, so we can spend more time flame conferring while also being able to fire burst, which is very important. And then, of course, we have the Flame Brand Tome. This gives Renee plus two magical attack, which is nice. And then, of course, the Flame Conferral Skill, Activates before an ally's physical attack, i.e. Bruno. Add magic damage and burn to an ally's next attack of 50 potency. Very good stuff. Just making it so Bruno can punch through armor because the attack is now magical is already great. And then the fact that he's going to burn everything he hits on top of that, phenomenal. Notably as well, Bruno actually does have the second highest initiative in the squad, faster than our Lance Connect, which is important, so we're not using Flame Conferral on her. And the only one faster than him is our Druid Chantal, which is good because she wants to be able to get her curses out there, but we'll get to that. As far as what I actually have set up for Renee's tactics, you can see them here. She's set to Ice Bolt only if there is an enemy armored target, seeing as how we're probably going to be hitting everything with Bruno anyway and unfreezing things. So like freeze isn't gonna last that long in this setup. I do much prefer if she just can magic missile something and deal some generally good damage to vulnerable targets. Then if there are scouts or flying enemies present, she will focus sight on Bruno so he can try and burn them down quickly. We don't always need flame conferral to proc in these situations. We do have other ways of activating burn, so it's not the biggest deal if he does not. And being able to take out a dodgy thief or a dangerous flyer is very good. Then I do have flame conferral set to the front row. I'm not sure that this is actually necessary per se, seeing as how Bruno is almost guaranteed to be attacking first at any given time. And I don't know that front row actually works on your own front row. I haven't tested it thoroughly enough, but either way, I've never really had an issue with this activating the way that I need it to, so I haven't bothered taking it off. Finally, of course, we have Fire Burst set to a burning target because without having it set to a burning target, you could wind up hitting something that isn't on fire and that would kind of defeat the whole purpose. And what it does, if you've not seen it before, is it activates at the end of a battle, it attacks a single enemy with magic, and it hits all enemies if the target is burning. So basically it lights a fire in someone who's already on fire and makes them explode like an action bomb, which is awesome. Moving over to Christine, our Lance Connect. I alternate between two different weapons for her. Sometimes I have the Searing Rapier on, sometimes I have the King's Blade Cornix. The King's Blade Cornix is obviously going to be a better all around combat piece as it gives the same amount of physical attack as the Searing Rapier, but it gives her plus five to all of her stats, much like Bruno's Axe, which is obviously really strong. However, as enemy squads have been increasing in size, and especially as I've been going through Elheim, where the elves have a distressing habit of removing debuffs and status effects that you put on them, having an extra source of burn has been really nice. Then we have the Blessed Round Shield, gives extra guard efficiency, gives her HP back when using an active skill as well, which again, as one of our other kind of tanks and heavy hitters, there is no healing on this squad except for self-healing, so she does appreciate having that. We have the Retaliation Earrings. Counterattack skills deal plus 40 damage, which is a nice boon to her following Slash. Let's it hit even harder. And then the Warrior's Medallion to make everything that she does hurt just a little bit more. It's a simple setup. We're rocking offensive and keen for as much damage as we can eke out here. And she does have a pretty baller gold and black design. So I love Christine. She has been a very solid member of the entire army, not just this unit. And she's been slotted in here pretty well. Could she be swapped out for something else? I think so. Of all four characters in this unit, the Lance Connect is probably the least necessary, but she does synergize very well with Bruno because of all the attacks that he takes, allowing her to then following Slash on the regular. We can, of course, b uh, Bastard's Cross if there's nothing to burn. That happens very rarely, but it does happen every once in a while. And when it does, we have it set to target the highest HP enemy because it gets bonus damage against enemies with high HP. So like, of course. Finally, let's round out the discussion with Chantal, our druid, who is potentially the most important piece besides Bruno himself. Her stats and appearance are as follows, rocking an awesome black and purple design, kind of complementary to Christine's black and gold design and Bruno's black and orange design and Renee's black on black design. I didn't, didn't think about how color coordinated the squad kind of was until just now. That's 
Actually pretty awesome. Uh, anyway, Chantal the Druid is going with Go-Getter and Precise. Not... <sighs> Druids are weird. Druids are in a very weird spot because they don't need attack stats at all. Like, at all. They don't attack. So, you can kind of knock off half of the stat sets right there, which is pretty great. So, Go-Getter gives her extra initiatives so that she's able to debuff the enemies thoroughly and quickly. And Precise just being accurate and having potential crit, I figured might be good. It's hard to say. Again, nothing really seems to miss with druids unless you're blinded. So I don't know. It's an odd class in that regard, but I mean, it's certainly been working for her. For her loadout, we have the following. Of course, the flame hex staff, the most important part of this, which gives her fire curse, inflicts burn on a row of enemies with a hit rate of true. So again, precise, not really needed, but uh, this is awesome, just being able to have up to three enemies be burning at the start of the fight so that they start taking very good damage is excellent. I was super excited when I found this staff. Then we have the Acrobat's Shoes. It gives the Impetus Stance ability. Activates at the start of a battle. Grants the user plus one active point and minus 50% attack. Well, the good thing is, uh, again, Chantal doesn't attack. And having an extra AP so she can throw around more curses is pretty damn good. Then we have a Lapis Pendant to give extra activations of Impetus Stance, Quick Curse, etc. And a Vitality Talisman to make her just a little bit tankier, since again, there's no actual proper healing on this team. So helping themselves stay alive is quite good. Now, of course, as a Druid, we do have two different types of curse going on here. Offensive Curse, row with most combatants, three or more AP, is a good way to make sure that we aren't fire cursing all the time, still debuffing enemies, but only if Chantal actually has a good amount of AP to use. Once she has less than three AP, which she will have three at the start of the fight due to the Acrobat's Shoes, she will then switch over to fire cursing all of the enemies. We do have this set to not burning, so that she will alternate back and forth between the two rows until everything is burning, and then she has quick curse on hand for if anything tries to sneak an attack in on Bruno or our back line, she can nerf their attack and make it so that they can't crit. This is an awesome setup. I love this squad to death. They do have their weaknesses, of course. Uh, if Bruno gets blinded, that can become a big problem. I do tend to swap in the Watchman's Lantern sometimes if I'm worried about that happening. And also, if he gets stunned, because if he gets stunned, then he's not going to be able to bulk up, and then he's going to fold extremely quickly. So, accessories like the Barbed Ribbon that can prevent stun, or ways to clear stun, maybe having like a Cleric in this squad would definitely be good. I'm considering maybe adding a Cleric to the squad once I up it to unit size 5, moving our Lance Connect up to the front. There's options. We'll have to see. Overall, though, I absolutely adore this team. I highly encourage you to steal this squad, as is the name of this little sub-series of videos. I think you'll have an absolute blast with it. If you have a different sort of burn comp setup, maybe using wizards like the original version of my comp, the Firebugs was set up, let me know in the comments down below. And then if you do have any other really cool, synergistic, flashy teams like this, let me know that as well. I'd love to see what creative stuff y'all have come up with. And if it seems like it's particularly fun or would fit into my army well, then maybe I'll recreate it, steal your squad instead, and then do a video about it telling everyone else to steal your squad. Because we all get better if we all have better comps to work with. And the only way we can maximize our capability in that regard is by learning from each other. With that said, though, my name has been Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Leg Man. I'm going to go ahead and start wrapping this one up here. But before I do... It is, well, Saturday by the time you're seeing this video, so I need to thank my supporters. From Patreon, thank you so very much. There's so many more of you now than there was just a month ago. Caffeine System, 18C, Navi, Kejo, Christian Soto, Chris Muller, Yoking Haddock, Riley Thatcher, Firestorm, Stella Stallion, Faytail, Connor B, Jonathan Conley, Tefmon, Riak Olivier, Darius, Zachary Tincher, Light B, Keegan Stinson, Abergale, Gryffindor, Tajian, True Mayhem, Scott Goodrich, Jim Hamilton, Rockarug, Lightning Fang, Holly, Ashbourne, X13, Greg Reinhardt, Vincent Gerbaki, User Nizzle, Momo Cruz, Izzy, Renee Pinot, Guts of Rivia, Kue, Skelton 2, Vantress, Thought Spasm, Matevo Kavaric, Kevin Kurz, Grim, T Force G, Heartland, Nick Frankovich, and Pika 3245. I thought that list was going to end like three different times there. I was trying to go for it with a one shot and it didn't work. I had to keep taking tiny little gasping breaths in between so as to not break the flow. Thank you guys so much. Y'all are the absolute goddamn best. I'm amazed that there's so many of you here now with us. Thank you. It <laughs> helps so freaking much. Like, so much. Thank you. As well, thank you to my YouTube members. 
Canadian animator guy, Tojo Jr., Luxor, Tenshi, Matthew Berry, King Tony, John Eaton, Captain Planet, Light B, Midday Moonlight, Matthew Snyder, RJD, Michael Poole, Dre, X13, Segno, The Game Reaper, Lost Knight, Super Blue, Joshua, Rock the Pudge, Little Big Trouble, Retsu, Pristinely Ungifted, Caffeine System, Hybrid Custode, Noche, and Izzy. Thank you for being here, everyone. Thank you, as always, for all the support. I say it all the time. But when the channel was small and I was struggling to make it grow and to survive, the members, the patrons, that direct support is the thing that kept me going. It's the thing that kept me afloat. So thank you so much to all of you for that. And thank you to all the new folks who've come along as well. Not being 100% beholden to AdRev is way more of a relief than I think anyone who hasn't done YouTube could ever understand. So sincerely, thank you so, so much. With all that said though, I'm going to wrap this one up here. I hope you all have a good night. Stay safe and healthy out there. And remember, be good to each other. Bye now.